site is going as i've gotten <laughs> older I, I can't even read my twitter feed like, ah fuck these people i don't li- i don't read it if i don't put my glasses i don't know what the fuck they're saying oh my god so it's so so, it's so, so good but but i'm not but i'm not saying people don't get depressed and get anxious i'm saying psychosis is a different thing yes. okay okay and, I, and I think we're, we're we are do- though discussing overall mental health yes i mean uh, look I'm, I'm saying this because i really think that this is something that i've, I've made a big turn over the last few years uh with myself that I, I don't take a quick think, bathroom break. That's yeah, please okay. go. Sure. I don't think marijuana is as safe as I used to think it is. I used to think it was benign. I really used to think there was no big deal. But I have a friend that I discussed the other day who is a really confident, fucking muscular, handsome man that never did anything. And he took a marijuana edible to go to sleep. And for two weeks, this guy was fu- – this is a different guy, not the oh, guy I was talking it's about. not the Not guy. Rafi. No, a different guy. He took it and he experienced suicidal thoughts and, and all these. He, he had like severe consequences. I think that the that human beings, we vary so much biologically that to just make this overall blanket statement, what's good for you is good for me, yes. is irresponsible. And I've been irresponsible saying that well, before. Well, well, one reason, it's interesting. One reason I think that alcohol is so widely accepted, despite all the problems it causes and Again, alcohol can certainly cause problems. Yeah. Is that alcohol affects most people pretty much the same way? You know, if and you sort of know if what somebody looks like when they have one drink, when they have five drinks, if I've they have got ten some drinks. Friends, I've got some friends that get those gerbil eyes. You ever see when people get shark eyes? <laughs> yeah. They're just gone. And yes. then they start talking crazy yes. and like, whoa. But, no, but, 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 but you sort of know that. And you sort of know how long it's going to take to clear your body. Mm-hmm. And you, right, yes. Cannabis is so different. It's right. a really complicated drug. And it does affect different people in different ways. Yes. And also the tolerance has changed yeah. radically. Yeah. So, yeah. so, you know, people say, well, two and a half milligrams of THC you vape it that's like one drink for somebody who you know who doesn't use but then if no. you're if you're a tolerant user you can use 200 milligrams in a day that's 80 drinks yes. it's a weird drug and then there's the issue of eating it you yes know, when you eat it your body produces something called 11 hydroxy yep. metabolite it's uh, far more psychoactive yeah, you are all long for the ride when that happens yes you uh, are yes and it can take days for it to get out of your system I, I know many people have eaten marijuana edibles and then they call me up the next day like dude i'm still hot yeah yeah it's so, real. so 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 i think i think the legalization community has sort of said for years like oh there's basically no downsides to this there's mm-hmm. only upsides the cops will bust smokers there'll be tax revenue all these people have a way to get high that's clearly safer than alcohol and unfortunately that's just not true i think you're right and i think um the the, the issue that people I, from what i've read are having with your book are people that are marijuana advocates that think that your position is unbalanced and that you've ignored the positive aspects of thc in terms of like what he was talking about cognitive benefits for people with psychotic episodes and that you're only focusing on the negative i guess i will plead guilty to that yeah because i think that for 20 years people have only heard the positives right i i I think that's uh i think that's also i'll plead guilty to that myself because i think that i've only been discussing the positives and one of the things that i've tried very hard to do and one of the things i've learned how to do from doing this podcast and experiencing criticism and communicating with a bunch of different people with a lot of different viewpoints is examine my own positions and try to figure out am i coming at this from a a truly balanced position or am i trying to support a conclusion that i started out with and i'm trying to you know somehow or another back up my own work or back up my own my own statements and 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 sort of prop them up instead of being really honest and objective. Right. And it's very difficult to do. Listen, I wrote a book called Tell Your Children the Truth yeah. About Marijuana, Mental Illness and Violence. You I don't think you can you can think that that book is going to be a compendium of the pros and cons of well, marijuana. Well, if you want to tell your children the truth, though, you but, really do want to tell them the pros and cons. Right. And, but, and you but, did but, indicate, Alex, you said, you know, we should tell people the truth in, yes. in the book, right? So, you know, I think that when you're telling, and you're saying that, that you're telling the truth, and Alex, I'm agreeing with you that you're telling part of the truth. Right. But part of the truth is you know a little bit deceiving and deceptive in some ways right you want to tell the whole truth when you tell the whole truth then you give the whole story and then people can actually make you know a good informed decision based upon that like if people are are going to just read one part of the story then of course they're going to make a decision just based upon that one part they're not going to make you know an an informed decision based upon all of the parts and because of that people are going to make you know, some very poor choices. I completely agree with that. But to me, 
the last 20 years have been an exercise in the other side, in the legalization side, doing a very, very good job talking up its arguments. And essentially, there's there's almost nobody on the other side. There's this one well, guy, Kevin listen, Sabet, who's what gotten about killed. Jeff Sessions? But I mean, Jeff- you had the fucking goddamn attorney general <laughs> who's telling people that good people don't smoke marijuana. Not, and that's literally right. a quote yeah, that he right. says. <laughs> and yeah, <laughs> right, thank but, God that little moron's not in office anymore. <laughs> but that's that's a terrible thing to say. Sure, good people don't smoke I, marijuana. I, there's I, a lot of wonderful people I, who smoke marijuana. That's just not true. And, and, and by the way, I think this is a personal choice, okay? Especially for adults. Yes. Okay? And and you can make bad personal choices. You go, uh, look, I play cards. I love to play poker. I'm sad that on this trip to LA, I didn't get to go to a poker room. But you can go into a casino and you can see people who've you lost. You change your flight. Uh, don't, a lot of, a lot don't, of places don't, close by, I'll direct you to them. Don't My encourage friend Ari, he used to make a living doing that. He was struggling with comedy. Don't, don't encourage me. Um, but, but you can go to a casino and see people who've lost their houses. Yes, yes, it doesn't yeah. mean that gambling should be illegal. I agree. It also means that there's less and more dangerous forms. That device in your your hand where you can bet on what the next pitch is going to be if it's right. going to be a ball or strike yeah that's more dangerous than my having to drive to the commerce and play there yeah. and 100 percent or 98 percent thc that an 18 year old vapes is a lot more dangerous than a five percent you know cbd 15 percent thc product that dr hart might suggest his patient uses once a night to go to sleep Agreed. but that Agreed. but that's the message that you know we should be putting out there right we shouldn't just be you know focusing on one side of the story like that part you know should also be you know included in the book and like you know your book um you know in some ways has made me rethink the way that I write, you know, because my, my first book uh, was co-authored with Jeremy Costin called Friendly Fire. You know, my second book that I'm writing now is called Cannabis for PTG. So it's how to transform post-traumatic stress into post-traumatic growth, right? Because I feel that, and, you know, we all know examples of people that have, you know, encountered really difficult obstacles in their life. And some people have, you know, succumbed to that stress and they've gone down, you know, the wrong path kind of thing. And then other people have used that stress to their advantage and they've actually become you know better because of it and you know um, CBD and THC can both help facilitate that process you know when you're looking at someone like like a veteran for example you know the hallmark of someone with who's PTSD is someone who doesn't leave their home and they can't sleep at night so like when I see a vet in my office a lot of the times they'll be leaving their home like five to ten days a month right so when you give them CBD and this is really important for people to understand CBD has been shown to decrease learned fear that's incredible, right? So um, if you can get people outside of their home, because I'm not talking about, again, you know, someone who's, you know, um, too nervous to like go to a, uh, you know, a, a the bar with like the friends or something like that. I'm talking to people who like, you know, it's difficult for them to go to the grocery right. store, just like pick up a few things. So, you know, those are the type of people that I see in my practice. So CBD is really excellent for that. Then when you look at, you know, the, the nighttime component, um, you know, THC, again, is excellent for reducing nightmares. That's been shown in studies. And it, it was even shown with one pharmaceutical drug, Nablone. Again, I don't really um, use Nablone very much because it's only one um, cannabinoid. And I do believe in, in, in the entourage effect and using all of, of the cannabinoids. So I don't use that that much. But that shows that THC can reduce nightmares. And you know, if you have, you have, if you have PTSD, I mean, if you talk to someone who, who has PTSD, and again, this is this comes from a clinician's point of view, they will tell you, "I will try anything," right. and that's the same way when you get with like you know um, the parents of of of, uh, of kids who have seizures all day. Nobody wants to see that. You know, and like and like Alex, you know, if your kids you know ever started getting getting seizures, which you know I hope I hope they don't because it's it's terrible you know what, what it can do to people. But you know when, he, when when if that ever happened, you know I would hope that you would consider you know CBD as a potential treatment yes. option. I, I think right. he's he's not against that. I think we have to be really clear of this distinction. Like CBD, you're not against no, CBD no. at all, and I don't I don't think anybody is. I, I think no one really is arguing except maybe the federal government in certain levels is arguing against CBD. That's probably some pushback from the pharmaceutical industry. The reality is CBD is proven to be at least as far as i've read very safe and very effective for a bunch of different disorders especially those that are about reducing and uh, have something to do with inflammation or seizures yeah yes. one of my good friends uh, his son has uh, developed seizures and cbd knocked it out just can, killed it can, killed well, it entirely. let me ask you I, I, this is very I, recently you know you're somebody who's a you know who's a cannabis user you obviously know a lot of users why do you think it is that people you know, in legal states where they can really express a preference, they can go into a dispensary and know exactly what they're buying. 
why is it that they want such high potency THC product? Because they get used to it. Um, you, your tolerance develops, uh, you, it builds up. Uh, you know, every year we do this thing called Sober October, where we don't do any, no drinking, no, yeah. no pot, and we do, do some sort of crazy challenge. Uh, me and three of my buddies, and uh, when we do it, uh, what it's, it's very interesting how your tolerance is r radically reduced. Like yeah. I'll, I'll smoke pot at the end of that month, and I'm like, holy shit! <laughs> like I, I don't even know what I'm talking about in the mid sentence, and I'm just b blitzkrieged. Whereas you know now, like uh, I smoked a little weed last night, did some stand up, had a great old time. There was no no issues with it at all. But I'm used to it. And if the weed that I smoked last night, I, I assume you don't smoke marijuana. I, I do not. Okay, if you and me were together last night and I gave you a hit of my joint, you'd be still there <laughs> in the corner in the fetal position going, what in the fuck is going on? Because the marijuana is ridiculously powerful, but once you're accustomed to it, once your body acclimates, it's really not that big of a deal. The problem is uh, you, you're dealing with a lot of habitual daily users and for those people like my friend joey diaz there's a video of him giving this uh, other comedian uh w how many milligrams of those stars of death oh uh, to lee when we give Owen, what did he give Owen? Oh, I think just one. He ruined his but life. It would have been about 200 to 250. <laughs> yeah, yeah he ruined oh his life. I think I heard that the podcast. You're saying like 250. He opened the door and went out. Uh, Joey made a video, but the, the, the day changed Owen's life. <laughs> like, literally, fucked the guy's head up. Like, <laughs> he went outside and he vanished. He's gone. It's just, <laughs> so, <laughs> dude, no, man, that's <laughs> cannabis psychosis. <laughs> yeah, well, I think, I think there's a real argument to be made, it's particularly with him. Well, but, uh, I was going to make two, two points on that. So you definitely can develop uh, a tolerance. You know, yeah. And I tell people all the time, try and take at least one three-week break. Um, but the evidence does show that uh, if you stop for four weeks, generally all your receptors return and it'll be like you've never used cannabis before. Yeah, so that's my experience. Should, should show and that's even with people who, who are really, really um, heavy users. I can go back and, and get the study. Um, but I mean, these people are using, I'm pretty sure it was like close to like seven joints a day well, so really heavy users and snoop dogg's a good example of that <laughs> you know my friend tony hinchcliffe is good buddies with snoop dogg and he said snoop dogg just smokes all day and he just like is always high and you know you're like well what do you do when you're not high he's like what <laughs> He's like, I'm never not high. <laughs> right. So everything he does, he is high as fuck. Right. Literally everything he does. Like for that guy, it's not that big of a deal. And for the way he lives his life, like he's just a relaxed, easygoing <laughs> guy. It's no problem. You can be high all day and live his life. And he's obviously wildly successful right. with this strategy. Yeah, wildly <laughs> successful. And the <laughs> second point I was I was gonna I was gonna make on that too though was um there does not appear to be any uh, tolerance at the CB2 receptor. So THC attaches to the CB1 receptor, and that's and that's where we know we can get tolerance. You know, some people, you know, they they have some pain, they use some THC, and sometimes they need a little bit more. Same, sometimes asleep, you know, they use THC, it'll work, and then it'll stop working. With CBD2, we haven't seen that. Meaning, like the people who uh, you know get get seizure control generally they don't need to increase the dose like the girl i was talking about earlier um you know i first described her i think when she was 20 when she was about 20 she's 25 now um she's never increased her dose right. you know she's just used the same amount of cbd for the last five that, years that's a medicine right like it yes. works for you, I, mean, you, have C you yeah, I think we should really stop <laughs> talking about cbd <laughs> i just i just way. wanted to, to make a note on the uh on the uh, tolerance of, of the yeah. cb1 i just wanted to make a note that cb2 there doesn't appear to be tolerance at all yeah. Right. yeah it's just there's just such a significant impact um when it, when it comes to especially edible thc uh, it, it's a, there's a significant impact on people's state of mind, and it's not always good. No, that's, that's just a fact. We, I 